Hi, this is Dr. Hayek and this video is about stoichiometry. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the stoichiometry of the precipitation reaction. I'm going to discuss this topic through solving an exercise. So let's take a look on this example. We will have 100 milliliter aliquot of 0.200 molar aqueous solution of potassium hydroxide is mixed with 100 milliliter of 0.200 molar aqueous solution of magnesium nitrate. Now the questions that we're going to discuss in this video are A. Write a balanced chemical equation for any reaction that occurs. B. What precipitate forms? C. What mass of precipitate is produced? And D. Calculate the concentration of each ion remaining in solution after precipitation is complete. So let's start by answering the first question. Write a balanced chemical equation for any reaction that occurs. Now, since we are mixing potassium hydroxide and magnesium nitrate, so we can say the KOH aqueous plus Mg NO32 aqueous. Now, this is going to be a, a double displacement reaction since Mg will go with OH and K will go with the nitrate. Therefore, we are going to get magnesium hydroxide MgOH2 plus KNO3, which is potassium nitrate. Now for now, I will not mention the state of every product. I'll leave this for the next part. But before we finish our answer, we need to write the balanced equation. So, so far, I have OH2 and I have NO3 2. So, I can multiply KNO3 by 2 and I will get the 2 NO3, which exists in the Mg NO3 2. And because now I have 2 potassium and I need 2 OH, so I will multiply the KOH by 2. So the balanced equation will be 2 KOH plus Mg NO3 2. It gives MgOH2 plus 2 KNO3. Now for the state of MgOH2 and KNO3, these will be discussed in the next question. So the next question is, what precipitate forms? Now, to be able to answer this question, we need to remember the solubility rules. Now, the first rule says, must nitrate salts are soluble. The second rule says, must salts containing the alkali metal ions, such as lithium, sodium, potassium, cesium, and rubidium, and the ammonium ion are soluble. So, looking at these two rules, I can simply say, that potassium nitrate is going to be soluble since it contains potassium and it also contains nitrate. So which one is going to be the precipitate then? It's the magnesium hydroxide. So the precipitate that will form is the magnesium hydroxide. So now I can finish writing my chemical equation by adding the solid state for magnesium hydroxide and aqueous for potassium nitrate. So now that we know the precipitate that forms, we can answer the third question, which is what mass of precipitate is produced? Now this means we will need to calculate the mass of MgOH2 produced. For that, since I have two reactants, I'm going to start by assuming the first reactant, which is potassium hydroxide, as the limiting reactant. So, 0.1000 liter potassium hydroxide, which is the 100 milliliter of the solution, potassium hydroxide. I will need to convert it to mole by multiplying by the molarity, which is 0.200 mole per liter. So this term will give me the number of mole of KOH. I will then multiply it by the molar ratio that's gonna be taken from the equation. I can see that every two mole of potassium hydroxide produce one mole of magnesium hydroxide. So hence the ratio one over two. Then, since I'm looking for the mass of the precipitate, 
I'm going to multiply by the molar mass of magnesium hydroxide, which is 58.33 grams per mole. And this will give me the answer as 0 0.583 grams magnesium hydroxide. Now, this is how much magnesium hydroxide or precipitate I would get if potassium hydroxide was the limiting reactant. Let's assume now the magnesium nitrate as the limiting reactant. In a similar way, we can figure out from the volume and the concentration the number of mole of magnesium nitrate. Then we multiply it by the molar ratio. Here the molar ratio is one to one. Every one mole magnesium nitrate gives one mole magnesium hydroxide. Then I multiply by the molar mass of magnesium hydroxide to obtain the mass of magnesium hydroxide produced. So I can find that from magnesium nitrate, 1.17 grams of magnesium hydroxide will be produced. So now I can see how much will be produced from potassium hydroxide and how much magnesium hydroxide will be produced from magnesium nitrate. So now I can say the KOH reagent is the limiting reagent because it produces the smaller quantity of the magnesium hydroxide precipitate. So my final answer will be 0 0.583 grams of magnesium hydroxide can form. Now that we found the mass of the precipitate, let's move on to the last question. The question says, calculate the concentration of each ion remaining in solution after precipitation is complete. Now, to better understand this part, we will need to take a look on the particulate representation of this question, and then we can proceed with our calculations. So let's consider the following particulate representation. Now, we have the magnesium nitrate that's gonna be mixed with potassium hydroxide. Let's first find the number of mole of potassium hydroxide. Now the number of mole can be found from the concentration and the volume. So N is equal to CM times V. Now, volume in this case has to be in liters since the concentration is in mole per liter. The number of mole of potassium hydroxide is then 0 0.0200 mole. Since one mole KOH gives one mole K plus and one mole OH minus, so I can say the number of mole of K plus is 0 0.0200 mole K plus and the same for OH minus. Now in a similar way, I can find the number of mole of magnesium nitrate, but here, since one mole of magnesium nitrate produces one mole of magnesium, so the number of mole of magnesium will be the same, 0 0.0200 mole. However, since one mole of magnesium nitrate produces two moles of nitrate, I will have 0 0.0400 mole of nitrate. So now, if I were to use particulate representation as it's represented in here, we can say, assuming that the 0 0.02 mole is four particles, so I will have four particles of K plus. I will also have four particles of OH minus and four particles of magnesium. However, I will have eight particles of nitrate. Now you can count these particles and you can see that we have 4 OH minus 4 K plus, we have 4 magnesium Mg2 plus, and we have 8 NO3 minus. Now if we mix these two solutions together, so all the particles will be together in a bigger container, now the volume of the final container is going to be 200 milliliter because it's 100 plus 100. Now, before any reaction occurs, we can see that the number of particles did not change. However, once we mix these two mixtures, we know that a precipitate will form, which is magnesium hydroxide. So every two hydroxide ions will take one magnesium to form the magnesium hydroxide precipitate. And therefore, as you can see in this representation, we will have complete consumption of the OH minus, so now we have zero particles of OH minus and 
two out of four particles of magnesium will be consumed and the remaining number of particles is going to be two particles now remember this is just an example I'm just uh, explaining it in here just to make it easier on you to imagine how this is going to work so the answer will not be zero particles and two particles because the question is about concentration and not number of particles so now that we understand uh, what is remaining and what reacted we can move on to find the concentrations so now k plus and NO3 minus nothing will happen to these ions and therefore I call them spectator ions now to answer this question I start by saying that the net ionic equation for this reaction is going to be the mg2 plus plus 2OH minus it gives mgoh2 solid now because KOH is the limiting reagent all of the OH minus is used up in the reaction so the concentration of OH minus in the mixture is going to be equal to zero molar now this is very easy always always the concentration of the limiting reagent after the precipitation is complete is going to be equal to zero now mg2 plus is the excess reactant now we will need to find the concentration of mg2 plus now what we can say we can say that the remaining mg2 plus is equal to the initial mg2 plus which is equal to 0 0.0200 mole minus the reacted mg2 plus which we will need to find it now i will be working with number of mole and later divide by the total volume to get the concentration so we have the initial number of mole of magnesium ions we will need to figure out how much reacted with the oh minus now using this stoichiometry I will be able to find the number of mole of mg2 plus reacted using the volume and the concentration of KOH I will get the number of mole of KOH and then from the balanced chemical equation I know that one mole of M mg no 32 reacts with two mole of KOH and I know also that every one mole of magnesium nitrate will produce one mole of magnesium ion and therefore the answer will be 0.0100 mole mg2 plus that is going to react with all the koh so now that i know the number of mole of magnesium reacted i can figure out the number of mole of magnesium remaining in solution which is going to be equal to 0.0100 mole mg2 plus remaining now taking this number of mole and dividing by the total volume which is 100 plus 100 so it's 200 milliliter or 0.2 liter the concentration of the remaining mg2 plus in solution will be equal to 0.0500 molar so we have answered that the concentration of OH minus is equal to zero because it's the limiting reactant and the concentration of mg2 plus is going to decrease it's going to be 0.0500 molar because this is the excess reagent so now let's take a look on what happens to the concentration of the spectator ions which is potassium and nitrate now since these are spectator ions so the number of mole will not change we can simply find the number of mole by multiplying the volume by the concentration and taking into consideration the molar ratio between the compound and the ion we will find that the number of mole of k plus is 0 0.0200 mole as we have seen in the particulate representation example now in a similar way we can find the number of mole of nitrate now keep in mind that every one mole of magnesium nitrate produces two mole of nitrate so the number of mole of nitrate will be 0 0.0400 mole of nitrate now taking this number of moles of each ion and divided by the total volume so we get the concentration of potassium as 0 0.100 molar and the concentration of nitrate as 0 0.200 200 molar so this way we find the concentration of the remaining ions in solution after precipitation i hope this video is helpful to you so please like share and subscribe and i'll see you next time